So all through yesterday, I was trying to record this video and uh, the website that I was trying to download the software for, for this, it was just having a heap of network errors and after about 100 clicks of trying to get it through, I finally got it downloaded. I guess that has to do with some firewall and the company might be based in China. Uh, but this right here is a BIOS program and this is the TL866, I think it is CS. And I'm actually told that it's not that good in 2018. Apparently the one you should get now is like a $2 USB one called the 341. Uh, and that's really cheap. This one cost me like $30. And uh, anyway, we're gonna find out because I haven't used it yet. And that's because I didn't know about this. These are essentially a jaw that can clip onto the motherboard. And then from there you can plug it to the BIOS programmer, which can then go into your main computer that works. And you can essentially flash a new BIOS onto a board with a single bus that would have otherwise been bricked. And today I've been donated two motherboards here from a friend that I'm told were bricked during a BIOS update. So it makes them perfect candidates to test whether or not this will work. And yes, that also looks like it does need a new Southbridge heatsink as well. So the next step now is just to grab your motherboard, put it down on a desk, grab your little programming tool, this one here, plug it into your computer via USB, and then get the little circuit board. It should actually uh, come with a circuit board. This is this little circuit board here that will plug to the jaws of life. And then these will then plug to the motherboard. And then from this actual computer here, we can download the software, uh, which again took us a day to download plug it up to this motherboard and then hopefully flash the BIOS from an external source and then hopefully this motherboard should work again. But yeah, let's try to do this. Yes to die. So after you've downloaded and installed the software from the website for whatever program you're gonna use, you have to then load up the BIOS and then copy the configuration into that particular BIOS setting. Uh, with the Mini Pro programmer, it actually didn't auto detect what it was. So I had to find out that the actual BIOS chip used was a Macronix uh, 32 series uh, chip and was an eight pin chip. After this, I started coming to the realization that the jaws that I used were actually of very low quality. And so I had to reconnect them so many different times. I even sprayed the motherboard's BIOS chip down with WD-40 on both motherboards. And uh, eventually we got a good connection, but it still wasn't 100%. For instance, one of the BIOS flashes actually took an hour and a half to perform. Uh, this was really surprising, uh, but the first one did it pretty quickly. So it's now the next day and the results are in. And I will say straight up that one of the motherboards is now working, which is awesome news because that motherboard I believe is worth about 40 US dollars on AliExpress, the market rates for it. The other motherboard, however, was very problematic. Uh, beforehand, it wouldn't boot up properly in that I had to hit the clear CMOS button and then it would finally restart and just shut off. Uh, but then we installed the new BIOS and it still did the same thing. So I started inspecting the pins on this motherboard and a lot of them were actually bent. Uh, so that's a problem in itself. Uh, upon bending the pins back, we did manage to get it to boot and stay on this time but there was unfortunately no signal coming out of the second motherboard. So these are both the same motherboards. Uh, so one of them ended up working, one of them must have some other problems besides the BIOS itself. We'll also talk about the gear right here because uh, one of the devices I do not recommend, and that's this JAWS here. Uh, it's really cheap to the point where it doesn't get a good connection a lot of the times. I had to fiddle around for hours just to make sure that it was finally connected properly. And I did everything right from the get-go. Had the one on the top right here, and then had the red on the one or the little arrow on the BIOS, and then had this connected in tandem to the one on this. And everything was supposed to work properly, but it just took so many tries to connect these little jaws properly themselves, to the point where I had to spray WD-40 on actually both of the motherboards, and then I finally got a signal and one of the BIOS flashes was pretty quick. The other was giving out error messages and I had to uncheck check device ID and also check verify. And then it took literally an hour and a half to flash the BIOS from this program. So uh, the TL866 itself, as others have mentioned, it is a, a little bit expensive, I think, especially if you're just gonna get this in a pair of jaws. Uh, there are much cheaper options. I think the 341 
is the popular choice. You can get it for like two to three dollars. However, with the Jaws, I would recommend getting a, a much higher quality one that connects properly. This one here was like a couple of dollars, uh, but it really gave me a lot of issues and a lot of problems when connecting. Uh, so if you are gonna get one of these and you're gonna use it regularly, then definitely spend some extra money. I'm gonna go back and reorder one that's of high quality and it clicks on properly. And so I don't get any problems when I'm trying to flash a BIOS externally. But other than that, I thank you guys so much for recommending me this stuff. It's already saved one motherboard and I'm sure it's gonna save a lot more going into the future. Uh, and it's already paid for itself with the motherboard that's been salvaged. So I can recommend it. The learning curve really isn't that bad. Uh, it took me a few hours to get used to everything. Uh, and as I said just before, definitely get yourself a decent pair of jaws if you wish to do this. And the beauty is you don't have to desolder anything and then you can get an answer straight away. Anyway, in terms of that other motherboard that didn't boot properly, I've tried bending the pins back uh, as perfect as I can get them and it's just not booting still. It was giving us a difference before and after, which does indicate that maybe it is the pins indeed on the CPU socket. I mean, I'll give it another attempt, but I spend a lot of time already trying to bend those pins back and it's just not working. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's pretty quick, uh, but these things definitely, they're good. I can recommend them. And if you have any experiences of your own with bringing boards back to life, would love reading those thoughts and opinions. And also don't forget to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.